And you got Jim Everett, um, all-time Purdue great, one of my all-time favorites for a lot of different reasons. Um, quarterback at Purdue from 1981 to 1985. And Jim, the reason I'm talking to you, not that I don't usually use need a reason or don't like to, but 40 years ago, my friend, 40 years ago, 1984, was that magical year in West Lafayette. Um, I want to sort of reminisce with you, have you kind of take us through this season, at least the highlights of it, Jim. Um, um, <clears throat> a special year for a lot of fans, obviously. Um, and just, you know, the, I, I remember, Jim, in the preseason, we didn't know who the quarterback was going to be on that 1984 team. It was you, Doug Downing, and Jeff Huber, I think, were the combatants. To, to just sort of just jump in into training camp in August of 84 and, and, and what you were looking forward to and what you expected in that quarterback room as far as competition goes. Well, I mean, going into the 84 season, I, I think everyone predicted Purdue to be in the really bottom half of the league. They, they had a question at quarterback, Leon Burtnett, new head coach. Um, Jim Young was there. You know, a lot of us guys were Jim Young guys that that carried over. Um, but I know Leon brought in, like you said, uh, Doug Downing, uh, <laughs> Hoover, and, and it was like, he, he told me, if you're tied with these guys, we're going with the young guy. And so that's kind of how it was. It was like, you know, and there was no loyalty there. But we would, like, for example, with the portal nowadays, mm -hmm. probably a lot of guys would have transferred, but we would have lost a year of eligibility. And already had, and so um, so we stuck around. But I wasn't Leon's guy. And if anyone's been around sports enough, you got to have your guy both as your head coach and your guy being your quarterback and they have to work in tandem. Um, I eventually became Leon's guy, God rest his soul, but uh, it, it was not easy. It was very difficult. And him being a defensive coordinator too, man, he asked the world for the quarterback. Um, but I just, he pretty much said you had to prove it. And so I did, you know, and I, I think that, you know, you talked about training camp. We, we were doing three days, but nowadays they wouldn't, they wouldn't be doing that. We even had a, Fred Mills, who was doing psychology stuff on us as well. So we were throwing the morning. We'd have an afternoon practice. It was a little easier. And then we'd have another throwing at night. So um, we were really putting a lot of stuff together and working with Fred Mills, who I think was very instrumental in our success. And I say that because not like I said, lot, not a lot of people believed in us. We had to believe in ourselves. And that's kind of where Fred kind of helped us first person visualization techniques that I still use to this day. So yeah. it was important. So, so he was like a team psych psychiatrist or psychiatrist? He was brought in. He worked with sports uh, clubs to work on the mental aspect of the game of being able to get beyond some of the blocks that you may, you know, everybody has a point where you might get stuck. And so Fred was, Fred was there to help us basically okay. have sky be the limit to our success. And boy, we just ate that up. Maybe we were so tired doing three days. Maybe maybe it just sank in. So now, Jim, at what point did you know you were you were going to be the guy that you were going to start the season opener, which of course was a real special season opener, the the inauguration game of the Hoosier Dome, the brand spanking new Hoosier Dome. What point did you know you were going to be the guy starting that game against Notre Dame? Hey, uh, Tom, I got to tell you this though. You know, you, you know, you're getting a little bit older when when you had the inaugural open up game of a dome that's no longer. OK, so that's <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was one of those. Well, I knew I was going to be I knew I was going to start. Um, I was going to get first chance. Now, if I went in there and and, you know, laid an egg, I, I, I would have immediately been pulled. So I knew that. But the fact that we went in there. We played against the Notre. It wasn't a. It wasn't a. It was a really a Notre Dame home game, but they moved it down to Indianapolis, so they really didn't have a home field advantage. I think it would have been much diff more difficult playing at Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, so we it was a friendly crowd for us, and then we just I love playing in the dome, and it was we just kind of took off, and yeah. after we won that game, and I think they were ranked, I don't know, top eight or top five in the uh, at the league at the time. I think we just pretty much announced that uh, Purdue is here to play. And uh, we started believing even more in ourselves. Yeah, number eight, Jim. Uh, you guys won 23 to 21 that day. 60,000 people, over 60,000 people were in the dome. And um, 
of course, after you won that game, there was no question Jim Everett was going to be the quarterback, right? It was your job. Yeah, that was that was job security right there. But I, you know, I, I still didn't want to go out and, you know, and keep looking over my shoulder or anything like that. But uh, Leon was like, you know, he was happy with it. He had the win. Um, of course, he didn't want us to be satisfied with just one big win. He wanted us to continue on, which we did. And uh, I got to admit, we had a, a roster that kind of surprised people with Bruce King at fullback and uh, we had Rodney Carter in there and, and Ray Wallace and, and good, good receivers. Um, Griffin was a good receiver. Um, the line was, the line was good. We'd had this uh, play called 89 fan hide and it really required the offensive line to do some one-on-one -on -one blocking and they, they did it well enough. So us, we could get rid of the ball. And what we did, we competed kind of with BYU that year as far as passing, because we the way we did our passing game, it was kind of extended handoffs sometimes with, yeah. with the guys that I just mentioned earlier. So it was a quick passing game. It was a revolutionary difference maker in the Big Ten at the time, kind of on part of what I think Drew Brees did a little bit later when they brought that other offense in from Wyoming. And they kind of took the Big Ten by surprise. So we kind of opened things up. It was a little tougher the next year um, after they kind of figured out, hey, let's not blitz these guys because they're pretty they're pretty dang talented. And then, of course, the next big win, Jim, October 6th in ross -Age Stadium. Here comes number two, Ohio State, led by Keith Byers. Kind of give me some of your memories there, how special that game was, and at what point you realized you were going to knock off Ohio State. Well, I'll never forget. And I'm going to jump very much to the end of the game because Mike Tomzak was our quarterback and he was a young guy and it was, I think he forgot what down it was, mm -hmm. but anyways, he decided to spike the ball, but it was fourth down and we got the ball back. And that was one of those things that I don't think that he probably ever lived at, lived down, <laughs> spiking the ball on fourth down uh, to try to stop the clock, to turn the ball over to us. And so, but it was one of those days where, man, they, they were going to blitz us. They were going to they were going to bring the heat against our offense. They were going to try to will their way to victory with Keith Byers. I think our offense or our defense did a heck of a job because Keith is um, he ran against everybody, yeah. but to hold that offense to to you know a point deficit uh, that we could get a victory was amazing. Um, the fact that we could score on them and what what they did is they brought all out blitz trying to get me, okay. and that was their tactic. Um, like I said, the next year they dropped eight because they figured they weren't going to do that because they got burnt so much. But Steve Griffin had a great day. I had actually some audible calls that I knew the blitz was coming. They were showing it. They were just taunting us like, we're going to come get you. I'm like, all right, so let me check out of this and do this and touchdown. So it worked out pretty good. <laughs> yeah, 23 points. That's all Ohio State scored. And of course, Purdue. Uh, one of uh, Jim, one, one of Purdue's touchdowns was a Rod Woodson pick six, um, which which I guess proves to be the difference maker in that ball game. And and then it sure did. And plus that uh, with with Tom Zach playing on quarterback on their side, when they when they got into a a dicey situation where they just couldn't hand it to buyers, they needed a quarterback. He wasn't the guy at that point. And again, Rod Woodson was a, was a freshman. I think Tom Zach was as well. And sometimes you get that from young players, as we all know, that you 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 have a day that they might not be as reliable as that that senior. And then Jim, the the trifecta that year, first Notre Dame, then Ohio State, then November third, Michigan in Ross Age Stadium again. You guys beat the Wolverines thirty one to twenty nine uh, to complete that hat trick. Uh, never done. Uh, before or since Jim, a team's beaten Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Michigan. Sort of give us some of your, your your recollections of knocking off the Wolverines that November day. Oh, the the Wolverines, they they walked right into our spider web is what they did. <laughs> now the score, 31 to 28, I think it was 29. The, mm -hmm. the 29. Um, at halftime, we had a 28 to nothing lead. Mm. That's how it was. I mean, I'm telling you what, Tom, anything that I threw was caught. Anything that we did, it was just one of those one of those magical moments that 
I don't care if we were playing an NFL team at that point. We were we were dialed. We were just we were just rocking and everything was working and guys were catching. I was almost getting tackled or I duck underneath and I flick something out and one guy one hands it and and keeps going. It was just one of those days where the ball's going to bounce our way. And Bo Schembechler said the same thing afterwards. He's like, I've never seen a team play like that in the first half. And we we really did. Now, we kind of, second half, we just kind of hung around saying, hey, uh, <laughs> you know, is this for real? Uh, but uh, we got three points out of it. But uh, it was enough to get a victory against a very, very tough. Uh, Bo Schembechler ran some of the best teams Um he reminds me a lot of Jim Harbaugh, to be honest with you, the way, the way, but I think that's some of his uh, personality. Um, but, um, and have you ever noticed, um, Tom, that Jim Harbaugh looks a little bit more like Bo Schembechler as he gets older? He even has the glasses. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> dad. <laughs> He's more than into Bo Schembechler, right? It's incredible, Jim. Now, you guys still had a chance to win the Big Ten going into Madison the next week at Wisconsin, correct? And we did. We had to go up to uh, Wisconsin, and we we were we were going against a Wisconsin team that had had been hurt most of the year, but they got Al Toon back. Yeah, uh, we ended up having to play in an ice storm up there, and we were very much a pass happy team, and and things just didn't work out as well as they did against Michigan the week before. But yeah, we were one game away from from being in that Rose Bowl. Uh, I'm telling you, there was there was some good talent on that team. And, and the other part about it is, Tom, I wanted to say, the guys that were on the sideline, we had some talented depth guys too, even some walk-on guys. Um, there's a guy in the program still named Steve Ber- uh, uh, Michael Berghoff, excuse me, Michael Berghoff. That's that's, that's what the, that he was part of the team. Uh, Doug DeVos, who yeah, um, who was part of our team. We had some very very good characters that um, that were involved in our program, and it, it was. Uh, I would say the quality of the individuals, not only the guys on the field, but off the field made that team pretty special. Well, Jim, I'm looking at a real quick depth chart. I'll, I'll throw some names at you. Your offensive lineman, Paul Alekna, uh, and of course, Rick Skabinski. Uh, some of the receivers you talked about, Steve Griffin, Mark Jackson. Mark Mark Drenth was an offensive lineman, Jim. Mentioned right. King already. James Medlock in the backfield with with Carter and Wallace, Marty Scott, your, your buddy, a tight end too, um, uh, Jack Berry, and then uh, Rick Bruner. How about Rick Bruner? The late Rick Bruner, Jim, was it was a nice little wide receiver from Boca Raton, Florida. Jerry Boat, I think, was your center. Yep. And then defensively, you know, Donnie Anderson was a pro. Rod Woodson, Chris Dishman, some great players in that secondary. Uh, Corey Cooper, Kenley Wilson, of course, Fred Strickland played on the Rams with you, the, the middle linebacker, and of course, Tony Visco, one of my favorites, and then Kevin Sumlin. Yeah, that was uh those 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 some good names. I mean, we had a uh, we had a chance uh, um, with you know Sumlin. He took his stuff. He was he was an overachiever, and, yeah. and I, I Kevin was the type of guy that could see things before it would happen, and I think he still did that when he was coaching. And you know, he just had a, he had a good knack for uh, for it. Um, but again, another another walk on tight that came yep. in that, that helped the program um but you have rod woods and donnie anderson back there chris dishman you had a you had an nfl you did secondary back there so um yeah, yeah it was it was there was there jim young did a good job recruiting and then leon did a good job getting getting a rod woods and getting some of the you know no one ever thought Rod Woodson would come to purdue but you know a five-star athlete and then a hall pro guy and just a all world dude. I mean, he's just he's just good people. Hall of Famer. And then Jim, take us uh take us to New Year's Eve that year, Atlanta Folk County Stadium. Um, first, when you found out you're gonna go to the Peach Bowl, and then some of your memories of going down there and playing that Virginia Cavalier team that I think was quarterback by the magic man, Don Mikowski. Mikowski was a quarterback, and they had a uh, running back named Ford who really took that second hat half i think we came out with the peach bowl we were we were we were just kind of flinging things around and just kind of playing and having a good time and i think we we finally got into uh, a, a good rhythm and and before the before halftime and i know people really don't realize this but their our offensive coordinator and leon got in a pretty big fight at halftime and we didn't we didn't have our offensive coordinator the second half and that was that was uh Mm-hmm. That was an interesting moment um, in all our careers when um, 
when you've got to just start doing some different things uh, and, and you see those, you know, when your team's not a team. Put yeah. It that way. Jim Coletto. Yes, sir. So they got in a little spat and what, what word Coletto just left the sideline to left the stadium after, after half. I'm not sure exactly when he left, but I knew the, the things weren't coming in like they were normally coming in. And there was a, there was a big, uh, halftime I think Jim came down too early before the halftime and then we scored real quick and they got into it and it was after that it was it was uh, a little bit different but um a little heated anyway well yeah, yeah Jim Coletta was a seemed like a pretty volatile guy but um and I think uh, I think Joe Tiller was your defensive coordinator so, he was he was our defensive he, um defensive line coach okay yeah so yeah there's some star power on that that coaching staff you had too Jim and again yeah. Just any, any any final thoughts on that 84 season? Like you said, I remember going into the year, there were no expectations. No. The 1983 season, I think they were, what, three and eight or three, seven and one. Uh, Scott Campbell was gone, you know, on and on it goes. And and uh, again, just people, I think, forget, some may, may forget how special that year was, Jim. And just, I got any, any final thoughts there? Uh, how special this season was and what it meant to you to beat those three schools too in the same season. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it still lives on as part of my legacy at this part in time. And as far as all the guys on our team, you know, I, I think that I look back on that time. I know it's been 40 years ago, but it's um, mm. when it's the sum of the parts were greater than when we, we all came together. And again, it was Leon Burtnett doing his stuff, the guys committing, Fred Mills helping out mentally. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a more mentally tough team um, that had zero expectations. I mean, the next year we had higher expectations and we actually didn't do as well, which we, we should have done way better. Um, but um, it was, it was a wild time. There was guys playing, you know, playing the best they possibly could. You talk about Rick Bruner, you talk about, uh, uh all, all the guys that were that were coming out, Bruce King, he was a, he was a fullback in the NFL for a while. Um, but all of those, everybody coming together, I just think that our our whole was more than the parts, and it was a commitment to everybody that was even on it. And I'm going to say this: the guys that were on the sideline that helped us in practice gave us great looks, and the commitment there was there was not a bunch of um, messing around. There was. Everyone was down to business. We were focused and it, and we had a good time and we joined each other and we joined each other off the field. I spent more time out of my lifetime buddies. Um, whenever we get around somewhere, we'll, you know, a guy like Bob Ziltz or, or Mark Durant or whoever it might be. Um, we still to this day um, have a chance to run into each other and, and have a good time. That's nice. Hey, real quick too, Jim, before, before you check out, I got to ask you about the Miami game, the second game of the year. The Miami Hurricanes, the defending national champions, came to Ross Age Stadium the week after you beat Notre Dame. This was Jimmy Johnson's first team. Talk about the Canes coming in. What it was like playing Miami? They weren't. They they weren't. They didn't have the mystique that they gained later in the '80s and the '90s. But that was still a special program that was really starting to rise. Yeah, they did. I think they had a guy named Tester Verde who wasn't too bad too at the time. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't recall a, a bunch about the game. I know the year before when we went down there, that was actually my first start against Miami. Um, I remember that game quite well, but we ended up getting blown out when we could have had a ten nothing lead. But uh, uh, you know, you 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 want to play against the best. When you and when you go to a school like Purdue, you're going to have some great games. You're going to have some important games, but you want to test yourself against the best in the league. And and I was fortunate to have a chance to go another 12 years in the NFL to play yeah. against some of the best guys that ever play the game. But um, you get a program like Miami. You look at a, a program like last year, like Michigan, or you know what they did up in Washington, uh, mm -hmm. even with the portal and stuff. So I, you just want to play against some of the best and see where you're at. You guys did that. You the three of the first five games in 1984. Number eight, Notre Dame. Number five, Miami. <laughs> Number two, Ohio State. Yeah, so, who was? I want to know who was scheduling us for this stuff. But no wonder, no wonder everyone thought we were going to get drubbed. <laughs> just crazy, Jim. Like I said, it's always fun uh, looking over our shoulder at yesterday. 1985 was a fun year, but it was disappointing. I was still, I was still thinking that pick game, Jim. Oh, I know. Pass to Jack Berry, right? The two point. It was a pass to Jack Berry. 
And to this day, I said, Jack, why'd you drop it? <laughs> What's he tell you? Are you short armed it? He says, yeah, you short armed it, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a combination of both, but it was a, it was one of those games that, boy, um, could have really changed around the, the season yeah. if we would have completed that that one. And and we actually overrode Le Leon at the time wanted to kick the extra point and just do the tie. Hmm. Really? Probably would have been the smart thing on the road. Yeah, get the win and then live for another day. But uh, who knows? Like I said, you want to grab that mojo and see if you can steal one in a place like Pitt. That's great, Jim. I know you've been back to West Lafayette recently. And are you planning to get back this fall at all? Are you going to be busy? I'm not. I'm not sure what this fall looks like. We've got we've got kids in college and doing all sorts of craziness and stuff. Here, we've got a few things going on and cooking up. But if I can get back, I certainly would love to. I always have a chance to get back. Mark Herman was the guy who recruited me. As a matter of fact, when I come back, Mark is still there. I mean, it's like Mark, you're just a like permanent. I mean, you might as well be Boiler Pete. I'm going to call him Boiler Boiler Mark. Well, you know, Mark, Mark, Mark didn't do the radio games this year. He, he took pick, Pete Quinn's spot. Oh, is, well, I heard Pete. I heard Pete step down. So Mark's going to step up, huh? Mark is going to take Pete Quinn's spot on the Purdue radio broadcast. So if you want oh. to, you can always tune in and listen to listen to Mark every Saturday if you want, Jim. I will. I will look forward to that. I know Pete will critique him well. Oh, yeah. You know, Pete, he's a character. <laughs> okay. so it's always fun talking we appreciate it again my friend and i always appreciate your time i know you're busy boiler up top appreciate you you're a bro